Hi everybody, it's Bobby Ogilvy. Um, so I just wanted to make a quick video uh, to explain, uh, let's say, some of my thoughts around uh, what different skills you need at different stages of your business. And I know sometimes, particularly those of you who may have seen some of the things I post on Facebook, um, you know, one thing that comes up, uh, particularly in the startup end of things, is around uh, it might might be framed as courage or the ability to take risks or the ability to manage your fear. Something along those lines. And um, so, you know, beyond saying personally, it's uh, it's a great quality, um, but particularly it's needed in the startup end of things. So, you know, if you were to break businesses into... Uh, so classically, when you study this in OD, you'll break them into like four categories, right? But let, let's condense that a bit. Let's say three categories. Uh, and Les, Les McCoon uh, does a, a great job talking about this stuff, so I would go see his description because he frames it as the, you know, those four OD categories and then the three transitionary states uh, between them. So he, he does a great job of talking about that. But if you think of, let's say, starting a business, scaling a business, and then you know, full-grown kind of operating that full-size business, to stabilizing the business, right? So let's kind of uh, work backwards here. And you have full-grown business. Um, a lot of it is around just sticking to processes, um, being efficient given the scope of, of what you do, do. And classically, there's this tone of relationship building and diplomacy. You know, presumably by that point, you have market share, you have these incomes, and then it's just about kind of defending your turf. You, you now, the big classic OD thing at this stage is that it's because you get so bureaucratic and process-oriented, um, it's very hard for you to innovate and do your own stuff. So it's very hard for you to you know hit new markets or come up with new innovative ways of approaching things because so much of your process is around just the opposite, being very regimented and controlled and predictable and well-trained and well-planned out, right? Um, and, and that's that's the problem you face, right? But uh, it, let's let's forget even the, the long-term future-facing side of innovation. It's really just this kind of defense strategy, right? You have this stuff in place. Um, scale that back. Um, scaling your business, right? So by that point, you already have a business working business model in place, but you're trying to make sure... Uh, particularly think of it as more locations expanding to new markets, right? So you have one or two offices. How do you get to five or 10 or 25 offices, right? How do you train new managers? How do you scale up operations? How would you select the right talent? How do you start to deal with transitions over time around, you know, what are your average turnovers? and How long does it take to, you know, get to penetrate a market? And when would you know if a market is saturated, right? Those are all kind of scaling issues because you, you know your basic thing you're selling, but now it's this, how do you get bigger? Um, uh, so, so the, you know, the, the way you're trying to operate there is this, it starts to get some of the process stuff, but it's also like you're trying to pick some of the great, um, on the people end, some of the great people that will help you expand to that. And not just so much the individual experts, you know, the best salesman, the best engineer, but the, the managers who people who can deal with enough teams to add capacity, right? Uh, again, Les McGowan's term is he calls them, I think operators, right? But then on the startup end of things, because you're so much trying to get this working business model, get enough ground under your feet that you can repeatedly, repeatedly sell this product or service and have an, you know, an, an ongoing business, right? Have some, uh, think of it as financial sustainability in play. You really need to be able to deal with um, risk and uncertainty. And it could be things like... Um, I mean, the obvious uh, cash situation is that you don't have a lot of cash to start with and you may not have a lot of extra cash particularly. So if you think of you know product development because it's almost like sunk cost and then you make money back later, that becomes very hard at that stage. But even in terms of selling some direct product or service, you're constantly trying to validate what's going on and things are changing so much that the average person really isn't good at that. They may be good at the task themselves, but the notion of starting a business around is really hard for them. And so, you know, you can quickly kind of bandy your own horns like you know oh you can't be a coward or it's it's for it's for brave people or it's for gutsy people but really if you think of it as a kind of think of it kind of emotionally experientially it's best for people that can keep a level head in dire situations and overall just be able to work in those um whether it's very process light situations or not freak out when things are tight because by its nature you're in a very tight resource constrained dynamic situation right um and and just the kind of uh, it's a personality trait really what we're talking about um, a lot of people really just aren't geared and designed for that right they may be great at other stages right um uh, i for example in some of my business coaching you know, have dealt with some people particularly who are her expatriates in their 
they're here trying to start businesses of old jobs they did in other countries, right? So one person was great at supply chain management, uh, but they had a very difficult time starting a business here, right? And, and it's not that they were actually bad at doing supply chain management. They were great in the existing firm and in this existing context they're in. But it's entirely different to say, hey, you did a great job in that 500-person firm with this many factories and this many operations. Say, hey, you're one person on your own. Now you're a supply chain management consultant. Make a go of it because you know supply chain, right? Very, very different ball of wax. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, what you think, particularly the strengths needed at these stages are, particularly the startup stage. Um, because I, <laughs> it's so easy to bandy around, you know, memes and little inspirational or, or you know, uh, quotes like that on the internet and think like that's that's obvious or, um, you know, it, it's it's kind of a value statement, right? But uh, I, I want people to realize you know, well done, there's there's a little bit of evidence, uh, norms behind this. So again, if you study organizational design, you'll you'll learn a bit more about the problems businesses face and the strengths they need to develop if they're going to survive and thrive. That's it for now. All right, see you guys later.